Greetings, 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 and welcome to Bible study here at the Olive Branch Baptist Church. We say greetings to each and every one of you. We want to welcome you to our Bible study. We're so gracious, we're so grateful, and we're so thankful that you are able to be with us today. All right, so listen, I want to say welcome to our conference callers, to those that are viewing us by way of YouTube, we say welcome to you. To those that are watching us by way of our church website, we extend our greetings. And to those that are joining us by way of Facebook Live. Let's see who's first up Facebook Live. There he is, Minister Joseph Parham. Hey, Minister Parham, welcome. All right, so got a great lesson prepared today. We're going to pick up where we left off on last week. And listen, um, I want you to go ahead and hit the share button, Facebook Live viewers. Hey, Sister Maddie Parham, so glad you could be with us. A Facebook Live, with Sister Lashamia Kellum. Hey, Sister Lashamia Lucy Baker. Welcome, welcome. Deacon Clarence Nunnally. All right, Facebook Live viewers, you know, we ask that you would share. Hit the share button. Let somebody know it's Bible study time. And if you're in this area, it might be a little frigid outside, a little cold. Well, that's a great, great opportunity for Bible study, right? Because we are able to come together in the confines of our homes, our workplaces, wherever we are in the nice warm air instead of being outside. So it's a great atmosphere for Bible study. All right. So, hey, Sister Molly North, welcome. Sister Wanda Street, Trustee Sheila Bonner, welcome. Hey, Sister Balsa, so glad you could be with us. All right. Brother Vincent Jiggets. All right. Facebook Live viewers, remember, hit the share button. Hit the share button. All right. We're going to start with our preliminaries. If you've been with us, yes, we're in the second, our second session together of the year of 2024. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, the first thing we do is we get our exercise on. We get our exercise on. I want you to go ahead and grab your box. Hey, Roxanne Logan. So glad you could be with us. Shirley Browder, welcome. I want you to go ahead and grab your Bibles. I want you to hold them up. Hold them high. The Word of God is coming by, and I want to catch it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess that my mind is at work. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, the ever living seed, the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, 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 never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good job. All right. We're all stretched out. Got our lifting and stretching it out the way. Let's see who else has joined. Hey, Sister Joanne Hill. Thank you so much for joining us. Audrey Love is with us. Welcome, Sister Audrey Love. Sherry Parker. Sherry Parker. Leaving early again. Okay. Well, we're glad that you could join in for a little while, Sister Parker. All right. Okay. Stella Winfield. Hey, Sister Stella and Sister Annie Clanton. So glad to have you both with us. All right. So there, there she is, Deaconess Rita Winkler and Deacon Winkler. So glad the Winklers are with us today. All right. Remember, Facebook Live viewers, I want you to hit the share button. All right. Let somebody know it's Bible study time. Hey, Trustee Barbara Browder. So glad you could be with us. All right. So listen, we're going to continue in our preliminaries. Next up is our mission statement. Mission statement. All right. On a count of three, mission statement. One, two, three. To be a powerful organism that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. To help people experience a growing knowledge of God as our Heavenly Father. To share freely Christ and His teaching. To experience a meaningful fellowship with God and fellow believers while ministering unselfishly to persons in our church, the community, and throughout the world. All right, good job, good job. Let's see who else has joined us. Okay, there she is, Sister Felicia Stratton Ray. Thank you for the stars, Sister Felicia. Thank you for the stars. Hey, Deaconess Faye Pride. So glad you could be with us, Deaconess Pride. I'm not going to say anything, Deaconess Pride. I'm not going to say anything. That was a nice outfit you had on this weekend. But I'm not saying anything, Deaconess Pride. I'm, I'm going to get stick with the Bible study, all right? Although you know I really want. Okay. All right. So, all right. hey, Sister Good. So glad you could be with us. All right. So listen. All right. We're going to continue in our preliminaries. Uh, next up will be our vision statement. Next up will be our vision statement. All right. Vision on account of, hey, to the Whites, Deaconess Whites, Deacon Whites. So glad you both could be with us. All right. All right. Next, we're going to do our vision, those five Ds. On account of three, one, two, three. Valuable to the community, viable, 
in the community, virtual beyond the community, visible by the community, and vital for the community. All right, good job, good job. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and we're going to move toward our theme, our theme. Now, this is an opportunity for me to go ahead and let you all know that we do have our syllabus that are available. Okay, we do have our syllabus that are available. And they have this information that, uh, that we go over in our preliminaries, and it gives us a schedule of what to expect. Okay, so if you haven't gotten a copy of it, for those that come in person, it's in the Commons area. You can pick that up on any given Sunday. Uh, for those that have access to Facebook Live, um, we posted it. Um, and uh, it's available to you on, on Facebook, actually. And then um, for those that may like you to get a copy, uh, you're not able to come in person, you're not able to access Facebook Live, or Facebook, I'm sorry, um, you're able to uh, get it via email. We will send it to you via email if we receive your email address. All right. Hey, Sister Maxine Branch, so glad you could be with us. All right. So next, next we're going to do, and continuing in our preliminaries, is our theme, our theme. We have a new theme. We have a new year, right? And so our theme for the year of 2024 is a ministry operating in consistent excellence. All right. So we also have a new theme scripture. So I want you to turn in your, hey, Sister Vicki Winfield, so glad you could be with us. I want you to turn in your Bibles, turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. I'll give you an opportunity to get there. Hey, to the bells, so glad you all could be with us, Deacon Bell, Sister Bell. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to look at verse 58. All right, I'm going to give you a moment to get there. Again, we want to welcome all of you all that have just joined us, especially to our conference callers, to those that are connecting with us by way of YouTube, and those that are watching us by way of our church website. Okay? And to our conference, to those that are uh, conference callers, again, uh, we thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we know that you can hear and you follow along, and we bless God for you. All right, Roxanne Logan is ready. Audrey Love is ready. Kathy Maddox. Hey, Sister Maddox. All right, Felice Stratton Ray is ready. Gloria White. Welcome, Sister Gloria White. All right, Deacon Clarence Nunnally is ready. Shirley Brown is ready. Hey, welcome, Sister Betty Brown. All right, Carolyn Winfield. She is with us. Welcome. All right, she's greeting everybody. I'm talking about it's a blessing for another great day of 12 noon bobs. Yes, it is, Sister Carolyn. God bless you. All right, and uh, Sister Carolyn, I'm, I stopped picking on some of those people about football. I took your advice, so thank you, Sister Carolyn. All right, Lucy Baker is ready. Juanita Johnson, welcome, Sister Johnson. All right, Minister Parham is ready. Maxine Branch is ready. Brenda Hayes is ready. Welcome, Sister Brenda. All right, so this is our theme scripture for the year 2024. All right. Oh, Jasmine Jackson. Well, hello, Jasmine Jackson. We're so glad to have you. Thank you for joining us. Wanda Street is ready. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to look at verse 58. Now, this is not our lesson for today. We are in Luke chapter 11, and today our plan is to conclude Luke chapter 11. We'll see how that goes. All right. <laughs> yes, Sister Carolyn. All right, love you too. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to, uh, I will say 2024, you will follow with our theme. What is our theme for the year again? A ministry operating in consistent excellence. After we give the theme, then we'll give the scripture reference. What is that? 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Then you will read your version, your version of 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. I'll be coming from the King James Version, so it may sound slightly different from yours, but we want you to be comfortable with your version. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Lashamia. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. That's correct. All right, so here we go. 2024, a ministry operating in consistent excellence. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All right, there it is. Good job, good job. And I just want to throw this in. For those of you all, uh, we had a busy day on Monday. I mean, so many um, services and activities and events. 
um, or MLK Day or the day holiday. Um, one of those uh, was at Tabernacle Baptist Church, and for the members of Olive Branch or those that are connecting with us, uh, the preacher gave a powerful uh, message. Um, but his scripture, his scripture was from um, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 15. And he talked about this particular verse. It was one of the verses that he was preaching from. So I was super excited. I was up in the balcony. And I, was, I was hoping that my, my Bible study students and my members of the church would remember that that's uh, the theme for the year. And we had that message taken. Uh, we had a message that concentrated on that text on the first Sunday of 2024. All right. Okay. So, hey, Brother Larry Hawkins. So glad you could be Barbara Banks. Welcome. Hey, Sister Zelma Elder. Thank you all so much for joining us. All right. Okay. Okay. So today, you got it, Deacon Nunnally. I'm going to ask now that you would turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, beginning at verse 37. Deacon Nunnally has helped us out for the Facebook Live viewers. All right. Hey, Sister Deborah Winfield. So glad you could be with us. Thank you. All right, so, yes, Shirley Brown, yes, yes. Okay, so, Luke chapter 11, verse 37. So I'm going to ask that you would turn the gospel according to St. Luke. And today we're going to, we're going to attempt to conclude uh, chapter 11. We've been there, uh, we've been in here for a moment. Um, took a break quite naturally. Um, then we came back to it. And last week um, we covered about 11 verses um, and uh, we talked about um, the shining of lights. If y'all remember, for those that was with us last week, and the shining of lights and how God expects us uh, to shine our lights, okay, and let uh, the world see the light that's in us and um, to be able to exemplify uh, the good news and the message that God wants us to, to portray. And so Jesus was teaching on that. Jesus was sharing on that. He was with us on last week. And so I hope that you went through last week uh, shining your light, okay? Even as basic as this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And so last week, um, that's what we covered. Okay, so now, <clears throat> today we will begin, we will begin at verse 37. Luke chapter 11 beginning at verse 37. All right, I'm going to give you a chance to get there. Sherry Parker is ready. Carolyn Winfield is ready. Audrey Love is ready. All right, get a few more. All right, great lesson, great lesson. Uh, Jesus is going to deal. And, you know, we like to say a lot of times that, you know, Jesus goes through and he has to deal with so many that opposed him, uh, different types of enemies. But, you know, um, it, it gives us an encouragement or it should give us encouragement um, to understand that we're going to face challenges. We're going to face opposition. Uh, we're going to face different types of opposition. And this is what Jesus is doing and has been doing since he started his earthly ministry. What's interesting in chapter 11, right about the 37th verse, um, he's going to get an invitation. He's going to get an invitation to go and eat. He's going to get an invitation to go and eat, um, to dine, and to sup. But let me suggest to you um, that if you studied this, you would know that everybody that invites you have your, does not have your best interest. All right? Every invitation, watch this, <laughs> is not one where they value you. Okay? So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. All right. Okay, yes, trusty bottom, clean and unclean. That's what we talked about. All right, Jasmine Jackson, but he came out on top every time. Yes, Jasmine Jackson said, but he came out on top. As a matter of fact, that's one of the key points of this lesson is that every time Jesus faces opposition, not just throughout the Gospels, but specifically um, in chapter 11, is every time that he faces opposition, he comes out ahead. Why? Because He's all-knowing. He knows their intent. He knows their plan. And Jesus, I mean, you, you really want to see him flip the script? Their intent, and I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, um, but Jasmine Jackson got me. Listen, she's on point. Their intent is to shame him. By the time we finish this, he's going to shame them. All right? Okay. I can, listen, I can show you better than I can tell you. Let's look at Scripture. Let's look at Scripture. Okay. All right. Can't hear. All right, Sherry Parker. Um... All right, try it again. Okay. Gloria Bland. Hey, Sister Gloria Bland. So glad you could be with us. All right. Okay. Now, here we go. Beginning at verse 37. 
of the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. All right, we talked about um, Jesus in chapter 11, he's schooling them about prayer. Uh, we saw the slander against Christ. Like I told you, it's not the first time this has happened um, in chapter 11. We saw the signs of condemnation. We saw the shining of lights. And now the latter part of chapter 11 is going to deal with the shaming of leaders. The intent was to shame the Lord. But Jesus is so wise, he knows what their intent is, is that he's going to flip the script. And by the time we're done, they're going to be the ones who are shamed. All right? All right. Says Felicia said, check your headphones, volume, and connection. All right. Lucy Baker, be careful who you eat with. <laughs> Lucy Baker, yes. Be careful who you eat with. Okay? And this is good. This is wisdom being shared. And thank you, Lucy Baker. Yes, you got to be careful who you eat with. Because, uh, well, scripture, I'm going to let scripture talk to us. All right, here we go. Verse 37. And he spake a certain, as, and as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. Now, this is the King James Version. So, some key things in verse 37. A, a Pharisee, well, a certain Pharisee. But let me tell you something about the Pharisees, for those that may not be familiar. Pharisees was a religious group, yes. But they were the most conservative of all religious groups. And you would think, being conservative, that they would give Jesus a, a chance, an opportunity. Um, but just because, and, and this is not a lesson about liberalism and conservatism, conservatism, conservativism. All right. Okay, tongue tie. This is not about being liberal or being conservative. It's about them being the most conservative group and the expectation that you would think the most conservative religious people, the most conservative religious believers, the most conservative religious followers would adhere or listen to the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But because they did not want to accept him, uh, as the son of God, they did not want to accept him. Um, they did not want to approve of his ministry, even in their conservatism, even in their conservative nature. They were not able to receive him. And it's going to show, it's going to show. And it's a sad, sad commentary. Sometimes the people who you expect to get it won't get it. All right. I don't know if that's ever been anybody's experience. The people that you expect to get it won't get it. And the people that you expect it not to get it, they're the ones who actually get it. Okay? All right. Um, Glory Bland says, yes, be careful who you eat with because salt and sugar looks the same. <laughs> they, hey, it does look the same. She's right about that. Okay? That's the first time I heard that one. I don't know if that's one of those country sayings, but that's a good one. Be careful, she said, be careful who you eat with because salt and sugar looks the same. All right, now when you pull it on and you begin to taste it, all right, and you put salt in your oatmeal, you're going you're gonna to find out something different. And you put sugar on your greens. Well, some people probably do that, you know. Um, people put sugar on a lot of things. But the point is, is that it looks the same, but it's distinctively different. All right, okay. Okay, I'm guessing it's my phone still can't go. Okay, we're hoping that you'll get on. Um, Sherry Parker. All right, so here we go. So text tells us that Jesus accepts the invitation. He accepts the invitation, and he goes and set to eat with this certain Pharisee. This incident with Christ, watch this, would set up the shaming of the religious leaders when the intent of the religious leaders was to shame him. Okay? So it, the text says... A certain Pharisee, he provided a meal. The text tells us that he invited Jesus in. It would seem like an invitation of hospitality, but it was ultimately an invitation of hostility. And this really helps me because even people that oppose you, even people that are against you, at moments will seem as though they like you, as it would seem as though they support you. It would seem as though they're rolling with you, riding with you, right? But in due, watch this, in due time, 
Guess what? It will be revealed the truth of their intent. And so right here you would think that they really like Jesus. He really wants, he's interested in what Jesus has to say. Watch scripture. All right? Watch scripture. Here it is. And when the, verse 38, and when the Pharisees saw it, they marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Listen, into the second verse, Jesus just sat down, right? Jesus just sat down to eat. He was invited to eat. If you follow scripture, right, and you study the word of God, look how immediate the Pharisee was trying to find fault in Jesus. He invited him, he's a guest, and the text says, and when the Pharisee saw it, what did he see? Watch the text. He marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Now, I want to share something with you. This is why Bible study is so important. This wasn't just about sanitation. No. This was about the religious group, Pharisees, and this religious, certain Pharisee, this religious leader wanting to find fault in Jesus. It wasn't even about sanitation. It was about him wanting Jesus to follow the rules and the rituals because in that day, yes, you washed for sanitation reasons, but you also washed for holiness reasons. And so the expectation of the Pharisee was that Jesus would have washed before dinner, attributing it to washing for holiness, not just sanitation. Okay? So this is more and deeper than washing his hands before he sit down and eat. This is about him wanting to find fault that Jesus, watch this, didn't go through the ritual or the practice of washing himself for holiness. But y'all ready for this? There was no need for Jesus to participate in their rules and their rituals because washing for holiness means that you were unclean at some point. Jesus didn't have to wash for holiness because he was sinless. And because he was sinless, there was no need for him to watch this. Watch for holiness. He was already holy. He was automatically holy. He would always be holy. Why? Because he was sinless. And so I want us to be able to, and, and this is why, you know, um, having Bible study is an opportunity for us. Hey, Emma Athey, so glad you could be with us. Meredith Jiggins have just joined us. Yes, uh huh. Yes, Deaconess Whites, you got it. Okay? You got it. You got it. They wanted to appear to be holy by the washing of hands. So their thing was, we, we, we're, we're practicing in, in holiness, but you didn't do it. And so you're not operating in the manner in which we operate, but he had no need to because he was sinless. All right, so let's keep going. Okay. <laughs> he was already holy. Yes, yes, Wanda Street. You got it. All right, so here we go. Text says, verse 39, and the Lord said unto him, as if Jesus wasn't ready. Y'all get ready for this. Watch how Jesus. Now, let me say this. And I, wanna, I, wanna, I should have said this earlier. The Pharisees were around when Jesus was gathered around the multitude, or when the multitude was gathered around him. But the intent of this certain Pharisee was to get him alone or in a limited space or a space with limited people. So the Pharisee invited him to his house. There were other leaders there, but they all had the intent to come against Jesus. They knew better than to come against Jesus in front of the multitude. Why? The multitudes loved Jesus. They followed Jesus. They believed in Jesus. And so the Pharisees knew that they couldn't uh, gear up or, or they couldn't entice or they couldn't, um, uh, you know, <laughs> cause an insurrection. <laughs> there it is. Okay. I ain't been political. So I might say. Listen, they knew that they could not entice others to come against them among the multitude because many in the multitude love Jesus. They follow Jesus. They saw him do miracles. They sought after him. And so be careful with the people that try to get you in a corner or the people that try to uh, get you to a limited space because they're afraid to come at you in front of the multitude. 
Because they realize that the majority of the people know your ministry. The majority of the people know th that you seek goodness. The majority of the people know that you're trying your best to help others. And so they want to get you off to themselves. That's another reason. Watch this. That's another reason you ought to be cautious about who you put yourself in or what circle you put yourself in. Because some people just want to get you, watch this, in this limited space so they can attack you. Where, where everybody comes against you. When they know that if you're out in the public, if you're out in among the multitude, that that's not going to happen because there's a whole lot of people that know your goodness. There's a whole lot of people know your efforts. There's a whole lot of people know that you're trying to do what's right. And so there it is. Divide and conquer. Uh, Jasmine, Jasmine, listen, this is Jasmine, I'm going to let you teach this next time. Yes, divide and conquer. Get you to themselves and then watch this try to overwhelm you and overrule you remember jesus went into his house so some people say well why did jesus go in his house well listen jesus had no worries at this because he knew that there he knew their intent all right okay so here it is the shame and kellum says they were using the law as a mirror for jesus but did not follow it themselves to find fault there it always works that way it always works. The Bible says, how can you see the speck in your brother's eye and you're missing that whole big plank or that log in your own eye? We have a tendency to look and try to find fault on others. All right? Yes, the bells, they clean the outside, but the inside of them was full of robbery and wickedness. Interesting that you said robbery. It's interesting that you said wickedness, bells, because Scripture, Jesus is about to do that. They do it in private and bring it, bring it to the light. Yes, Betty Brown. So I'm going back to what the bells said. Watch this. Check out the scripture. Verse 39. And the Lord said unto them, unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. And that's why I said the bells put robbery and wickedness. Because some verses um, talk about, um, use other words, than ravening. Uh, ravening actually it means greed. Yeah, it means greed. Not only uh, does it mean greed, um, but it also um, paints the picture uh, of someone that's trying to take something from someone else. All right? And that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to discredit Jesus' ministry. They were trying to discredit what his cause and his purpose was. All right? So, um, when the bells talked about uh, robbery um, and uh, talking about uh, being clean on the outside and not on the inside. Okay, here it is. When he says in verse um, 40, ye fools. Now, Jesus is in the man's house. <laughs> Jesus is sitting at his table. Jesus is eating his meat. <laughs> Jesus, watch this. <laughs> this, this, um, this is awesome. Because right is right and wrong is wrong. No matter what setting you're in. Uh, you, listen, there are times that you have to address what is wrong. Jesus says, ye fools. I'm going to read this in another version. He said, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? Let me read verse 40. Um, I want to read verse 40 to you in the, I think, the New Living Translation. Let's see. No, the Message Bible. Watch this. Verse 40 in the Message Bible. It says, stupid Pharisees, didn't the one who made the outside also make the inside? Jesus putting the shame on them, right? So you're, you're up here. You're asking me a question. You're marveling. You know, you, you, you're really bothered. You're ready to jump on me because... You didn't witness me wash for holiness when I had no need to wash for holiness. But you go through washing for holiness and you want it to be an appearance that you're doing things outside, but your inside is messed up. Your thoughts are messed up. Your greed is messed up. Your anger, your hatred is messed up. So watch this. This is a lesson for all of us. In our effort to clean ourselves up, we should desire to be clean on the outside and the inside. Don't you know what's on the inside will eventually work its way on the outside? As a matter of fact, a lot of things that we portray on the outside, outside of those that try to fool other people, 
is a result of what's really on the inside. Okay? So, Jesus was eating <laughs> that man's food and called him a fool. I <laughs> Jasmine Jackson, listen, yes, eating his food, sitting with his family. I don't know who all was around. I know there were other Pharisees. Watch this. Because he had garnered others to come around. Why says eating the man's food, eating the man's food, and call him a fool at the same time? Why? Because he was right. Because he was accurate. And then he calls him out. Listen to what he said. He said, "Ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also?" Verse forty-one. But rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. In your own mind, you think you're doing right. In your own mind. Giving them alms, you're trying to portray, you're trying to, you know, um, you know, convince individuals that 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 you got it right from your outward appearance. You're a religious leader, you're super conservative, but your heart's messed up. Okay, you you you, you need to be cleansed on the inside. And so Jesus says to them, listen. He says, you do these things for people to see. We know anybody like that? Uh oh. We know anybody that portray one thing on the outside? Why says, but their heart is really filled with evil, with 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 greed, um, with hatred. You know, it happens all the time. I think he was said earlier, sugar and salt looks the same. <laughs> but you'll find out the difference when you taste it. Now, here it is. Uh, yes, there it is, the shame and Kelly, and that's scripture. What comes out of you is what defiles a man. Watch this. Here it is. Here it is. That's scripture. All right? Not about what goes in. It's what comes out. All right. Molly Knopf said, yes, we are not to go along to get along with evil. I like that, Molly Knopf. Don't just go along with it to get along. No. Sometimes we have to confront it. Sometimes we got to identify it. God knows your heart. Yes. Listen, y'all are on it today. Okay, here we go. Verse 42. But woe unto you. Jesus is still teaching. Jesus is still speaking. Jesus is still directing his conversation to the Pharisees. And this is not the first time he's doing plural. And that's why some suggest, well, was it more than one Pharisee? It was the Pharisees. How the, the gentleman, the individual Pharisee invited him. But there were others present. You know, misery loves company. Y'all know how people do. They group up. Yeah. <laughs> they call their crew to come against you. It's happened before in, in the gospel according to St. Luke. And it's going to happen again. Y'all know those people. It's got to get people on their side to agree with them, to oppose you. Listen, if you're so big and bad, I mean, you know so much, you know, why can't you oppose me by yourself? <laughs> why, why, why you got to go get somebody else? You know? You know why? Because you don't have enough to stand on. Yeah, there it is. And so, what does Jesus say? Jesus said, but woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. These are ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. That's the case of some individuals. They do one thing and they miss, watch this, and they miss doing other things. They do, watch this, they want to exploit something that they do, but they neglect something they should have done. Let me say that again, all right? And in many cases, many cases, people will go out their way to do something that doesn't really necessarily need to be done, but they neglect what needs to be done. And so here it is, Jesus is pointing it out. What does he say? All right, who's at the doctor's office trying to listen? Audrey Love. Hey, glad you're trying to listen in. I pray it all goes well at the doctor's office, Audrey Love. Okay, all right, so here it is. Um, verse 42. Now, I hope you're understanding your version, some of these words, but uh, I'll read verse 42 for you. Um, he says, I've had it with you. You're hopeless, you Pharisees. You're frauds. You keep meticulous account books. Tithing on every nickel and dime you get, but manage to find loopholes for getting around basic matters of justice and God's love. Careful bookkeeping is commendable, 
but the basics are required. Message Bible, shut it down. Listen, that's, that's how some people operate. Meticulous in one area, but forget the weightier matters. Y'all remember when Jesus was visiting Mary and Martha, and Martha was in the kitchen, she was trying to cook, and you know, don't mean that was wrong. Okay, we've had this lesson, right? Um, and Mary chose to sit at his feet. And when Martha said, Jesus, tell Mary, come in there and help me, you know, Jesus said, what she's chosen is the better part. Okay, she chose to sit at my feet. And so you worried about the, watch the wrong things. And in one version, he says, you're worried about the wrong things. Okay, her priority was to sit at my feet. I appreciate you cooking for me in the kitchen. She said, but she's got a right. Listen, she's got her priorities in order. And so what, what Jesus is simply addressing is that they got their priorities out of order. You know, oh, I, you know, you know, anybody said, well, you know, I, I give, I, I tithe correctly, but, but watch this, but you can't help that person that, that's hungry, okay? You know, you'll talk about, well, I, I show up every Sunday, watch this, but you won't go and pick up the person whose car broke down and they called you five times to, to give them a ride, you know? Or, you, you know, there, there's certain things that individuals will do that might look good in, in front of people, but, Neglect the needs of people. Neglect the needs of individuals that 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 the, that God wants us to reach. That God wants us to help. That God wants us, you know, to lend a helping hand. And that's really what He's teaching. That's what He's saying. All right. Uh, too busy minding the next person's business. Okay. All right. Um, let's say He said, "Do all that is written. You can't pick and choose." That's right. That's right. Don't don't pick and choose what you're gonna do. Try your best to do everything that he wants us to do. All right? Here it is. We got to move on. Verse 43. Woe unto you. Notice Jesus comes back to back. When he says woe, it's a stern warning. Whenever you see in the Bible, woe unto you, Jesus is listen, emphatically saying, you better be careful. Okay? What does he say in verse 43? Woe unto you, Pharisees. Sound like he's repeating verse 42. Let's see what else he's got to say. For ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. Yeah, you like the high positions. You like being acknowledged. You like uh, holding positions. Listen, the greatest person in the kingdom, watch this, is the least and the last. He said, the last shall be first. First shall be last. Watch this. He said, and the least of them, you did it unto the least of them, you did it unto me. All right. So if, if you help the least, you, you, you did it unto me. Um, listen, the least is greater than the large. And that's Jesus is teaching this principle. And as Christians and as believers, you know, one of the things, I don't care how high up you get. I don't care how, what position you hold. We are mandated to always help one another. Always. That mandate won't go away. And this is what Jesus is saying to them. Sit at the man's table. You know, look, he probably said, pass the peas <laughs> and then started back on something and say, you, you, you hypocrite, you, you fool, you stupid. I mean, I mean, yeah, but you know what? He's speaking truth. He's speaking truth. Listen, rather for him to do it at the man's table, the man invited him to come and sit and eat. I can just imagine. He said, I ain't having him over here no more. <laughs> there it is. All right, here we go. Yes, some lack attention, and that's what it is. That, that's what it is. Many people, even in the body of Christ, seek attention. Listen, and, and I'm going to share this real quick because I really want to get through this lesson. Y'all are, are really engaged in it today. Um, just Monday, something happened Monday. Um, I'm not going to give the detail because some people might figure it out. And I uh, had an opportunity um, to be in the limelight. I had an opportunity to be, you know, exposed. I had an opportunity to even be on the news, actually. Um, and I deferred that. As a matter of fact, I to, uh, recommended that they capture something else. I had some, some members there, and one of the musicians was there. Um, and I, my advice was, no, oh, catch them. You know, highlight them, you know. And I tried, I, I, I went to a place where I didn't think anybody would see me. You know, I wanted to just kind of just be there. You know, um, it's not God's intent for us to be in pursuit 
of the limelight, in pursuit of recognition, in pursuit of, of these types of things. No, listen, if God wants that to happen, he can make it happen. Right. He, he, if he wants to elevate you, he wants to put you down, he, he can, yes, he does make that happen. I don't say he can make it happen. He does that. Okay, so we don't have to go out our way to, to prove anything to anybody. We don't have to go out our way to put ourselves in the limelight. And, that, and that's a lesson that's being taught right here. All right, so here we go. Hey, Renee Green, uh, Shirley Browder says, go to the person and confront them. Now watch the text. It says, woe unto you again, back to back to back. Yeah, he, look, he said it in verse 42. Now listen, we really could throw verse 40 in there because in verse 40 he said, you fools. But in verse 42 he says, woe unto you. Verse 43, woe unto you. And watch this. Now this is what I like about verse 44. He says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Throws in the scribes, pulls in the scribes. Watch this. He says, hypocrites. I got ahead of myself. Y'all heard me say that word because I knew it was in the scripture. Um, he says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Why is Jesus calling them hypocrites? Watch this. For ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them and are not aware of them. I'm telling you, gee, in verse 44, now I'm going to read verse 44 in New Living Translation. Watch this. Verse 44. Jesus points out, or Jesus addresses in verse 44, he says, Yes, what sorrow awaits you? For you are like hidden graves in a field. People walk over them without knowing the corruption they are stepping on. Wow. If he didn't call them out, if he didn't point out, you know, of their corruption, if he didn't point out, you know, the reality of who they were, he still, according to the scripture, still in the man's house. Didn't say he left the house. Thank you for the stars, Sherry Parker. Watch this. He means business. There it is, Shirley Browder. Yes, he means business. This is what I'm telling you. Jesus is not playing around in, in, in chapter 11. All right, let's go. Verse 45. Then answered one of the lawyers. Then answered one of the lawyers, Bible study is so good. Remember he was addressing the Pharisees. He went to the Pharisees' house. This also lets us know, when I said earlier that there were more individuals there, you know, you would say, how does he know that? You know, you know where does it say that? He went to the Pharisees' house. He sat down to eat with, and with the, Pharisee, the certain Pharisee that said this. And I told you all, you know, that there would be people that will gather others around. So there were others there. That's why Jesus was speaking in the plural. When he said Pharisees, ye fools, plural, okay? He was talking to more than just a certain Pharisee. Well, this shows us, watch this, that there were others around because when he says in verse 44, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, there had to be some scribes there. Verse 45, then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying thou reproachest us also. What is he saying? I want to hear from Facebook. I want to see if anybody else I want to say, if anybody else pick up, what is Jesus saying in verse 45? I mean, what is the um, lawyer saying to Jesus in verse 45? He's about to get, he's about to get shamed. Okay, Renee Green says, but we think Jesus is a joke. Oh, yeah, until he chastises us. Yes, and that's why we need it. All right, I want Facebook Live viewers. What is, what is the lawyer in King James Version, it says lawyer. Okay, watch this. What does he mean when he says to Jesus, thus saying thou reproachest us? What, what is he saying? I want to see if y'all pick up on this. We're looking at verse 45. There you go, Bells. There you, oh yeah, there you go, Minister Param. Mr. Parham says, you're embarrassing us, or embarrassing them. Jesus was embarrassing them. The bell said, you're insulting us. Yes, Betty Brown. He told Jesus he insulted. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Can I say this? That's why I got really excited about this text. I mean, this verse. Many times, corrective criticism. Many times, helpful 
wisdom is viewed as insult. Everybody ain't trying to insult you. Ain't nobody trying to talk about it. Ain't, ain't, ain't nobody. Listen, some things are shared to, to share wisdom and knowledge. Some are constructive criticisms. And so this, he was feeling, he was in his feelings, right? He said, man, you're insulting us. Do you know who we are? Well, maybe he didn't know who Jesus was. If I'm going to be corrected, if I'm going to be chastised, and somebody said that earlier, listen, yes, truth hurts, Betty Perry, you got it. You got it. Listen, it, truth hurts. How dare you talk to us and insult Yes, Felicia Stratton Ray. But Shane McKellum said, you're wrong as two left shoes, and you have never, and, and you have never to be offended. Okay. Yeah, listen, yes, wrong is two left shoes, and you don't want to be, listen, not everybody's, is, and, and this is, this is an, if we don't get any further, what he's accusing Jesus of, watch what Jesus comes back and say. Verse 46, and he said, woe unto you also. <laughs> listen, I'm listen, pass the potatoes. I heard what you said. Give me a second. He scooped out the potatoes. He said, woe unto you too. I mean, Jesus working the house. He's working the house. And, 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 and the excitement, uh, you know, um, that, that comes, you know, with this particular passage of scripture is that Jesus is pointing out hypocrites. He's pointing out false teachings. He's pointing out uh, religious groups who, who consider themselves greater than others, whether conservative or liberal, okay? The white just said, you have no right to be upset. You made this bed, now lie in it, yes. Okay, so y'all got it. Y'all got the nerve to be offended. Yes, the shame. Okay, so here it is. Watch this. We got to finish up. All right. He says, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers, plural, for ye laid men with burdens grievous to be borne, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. You lay it on folk, but you don't help folk. Oh, my. Listen. Uh, and, and, and he's pointing out the fact that it's unrighteous, you know, injustice. And after you lay it on, you don't help. I, I got to read verse um, 46 for you. Watch this. It says, yes, said Jesus, what sorrow also awaits you experts in religious law? For you crush people with impossible religious demands and you never lift a finger to ease the burden. Self-explanatory. I mean, he's calling them all out. Man, I would have been sitting in there by now. <laughs> I'm like, I ain't saying nothing. I know what they said about him. But this brother, this brother hitting us hard. I mean, I'm be sitting there like, you got some more lemonade? Because I'm sitting in the corner. I ain't saying nothing. Why? Because he's addressing and he's identifying what's really in them. He's not making, Jesus is not making something up. He knows them. He knows their intent. He knows their desires. He knows their character. He's, of course, he's all-knowing. He's omniscient. Okay. Um, what chapter, Luke, we on? Um, we're, oh, okay, Renee Green. We're Luke chapter 11. We're in Luke chapter 11, and we are uh, now going to begin verse 47. All right? Okay. He's calling it like he sees it. Yes, Jasmine. I'm um, Sister Jasmine. All right. Woe unto you, verse 47, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. <sighs> wow. Ye, this is what he says, build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Watch this. I'm going to keep going, but we're going to talk about these. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about them collectively. Truly, ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Verse 49. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. Here it is. Verses 47, 48, and 49. Let me share this with you. 
The religious leaders honored those who persecuted the great prophets. They claimed to rever the prophets, but still honored their persecutors. They say that they revered the prophets. They say that they respected the prophets, but watch this, they honored the prosecutors, the people that punished them, the people that killed them. So, well, well, you, you mixed up, okay? And, and, and that's what Jesus is pointing out to them, is that, you know, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. They say you, 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 you want to make people think that you appreciate the prophets that I sent forward, or that, that God sent forward, but you're honoring the ones who prosecuted them. You're honoring the ones who destroyed them. You're honoring the ones who killed them. So make up your mind. It's either right or it's wrong. You can't uphold right and wrong at the same time. That's injustice. You're not honoring what's right. Justice is fair. That's what it means, okay? And so, here it is, double standards. Yes, Jasmine. All right, um, you're welcome, Renee Green. Don't do as I do, do as I say. All right, here we go. They went low and Jesus went high. I hear you, Maddie Perry. All right, so listen, we're going to try to finish this up. All right, he says, verse 49, um, Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. So he's pointing out what they did. Verse 50, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. There, there, there's some responsibility there. Verse 50. As a result, this generation will be held responsible for the murder of all of God's prophets from the creation of the world. Somebody has to be held accountable. And here you are, you know, trying to be the big shots. Somebody's going to be held accountable. Verse 51. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of, of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. This generation is going to be responsible. Verse 52. Woe unto you lawyers. Y'all notice how many times in, Jesus has spoken more woes, a <laughs> woe unto you, in chapter 11 than I can recall any other chapter in the Bible. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a warning. Woe is a warning. So he's warning them, but he's also pointing out their wickedness. So while he's warning them, he's letting them know, I know your wickedness. And because he knew their wickedness, he had a right to give them a warning. Verse 53. Well, verse 52. I want to... Um, Use it to point out this word knowledge. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entered in ye hindered. What is he saying in verse 52? What sorrow awaits you experts in religious law? For ye removed the key to knowledge from the people. You don't enter the kingdom yourselves, and you would prevent others from entering. I wanted to read, that's the New Living Translation. I wanted to read that version because it makes it so clear. You had the key. You never entered, but you held others back from entering in. If that's not the biggest, if that's not the greatest, that's not a huge monumental era fault sin not only are you not you control it or you control the access to it you never enter into it you have no desire but you keep others out God is going to hold the person that does that more accountable than anyone else why because you held others back whether it's through your practices whether it's through your teachings whether it's through your religious Whatever, okay? Danger. Yes, Lucy Baker. You stop, there's the, there it is, bells. You stop people from receiving knowledge. God is going to hold us responsible. 
our job is to to open up avenues and, 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 and spread it so that others can get it. Our, our mandate is to make it accessible. That's why going back to that light, letting our light shine, is not to prevent people from getting it, but to push people to get it. We, we're going to finish. Here we go. Man, verse 53. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things. Oh, now, 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 now you want to, look, notice who, notice is included. It says, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him. Watch this. They were now provoking him. To try to find or provoking him to try to find error and fault. Watch this. He had flipped the script where their intent, the whole invitation to come and eat, the whole invitation to come and eat was to find fault in him, to discredit him. You invited me to dine only to discredit me. You asked me to come sit and sup. Watch this. Only for you to find fault in me. To find shame. I was invited to supper. To be shamed. Before Jesus gets up from the table. They're the ones who will be shamed. Verse 54. Laying wait for him. And seeking to catch something out of his mouth. That they might accuse him of. It never stops. That's why. Don't be discouraged. That you live in a world. No matter who you witness to. Who you share. Who you. Listen. Listen. Uh, who you testify to. Some people are going to always try to find fault and they're not going to stop. You can prove them wrong. You, I mean, you can prove your point. You can defend. You can stand on scripture. You can share it with them. Some people will consistently try to find fault and error. And that's exactly what happened in Luke chapter 11. All right, we're done. We're done. Listen, great lesson. You all, listen, you all. Yeah, they try to set them up, Lashamia. That's That's correct. They set Jesus up and got told off. <laughs> All right. Listen, y'all have been great. That I means the input, the responses. I'm telling yes, Maddie Perham. There will always be jealous people. That's correct. All right. You're welcome, Meredith Jiggins. Yes, Sister Felicia. All right. Audrey Love, I find no fault in God. Haven't found fault. We'll never find fault. Okay. All right. Yes, Larry Hawkins. Thank you, Captain Maddox. I, listen, enjoyed the lesson. You all did a great job. Yes, Deacon Dunderley. All right, listen, a few things I want to go over before we let you go. I want to make sure that you are aware of a lot of the things that are taking place. Um, first of all, I want to let you all know that there are other services that we have. There are other services that we have. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Listen, wow. You all are welcome. Y'all must have really enjoyed the lesson today. Okay, so here it is. Um... Here it is. We have other services, okay? Yes, more than just Bible study. So what do we do? What do we have? Listen, we have our IEM ministry. They host a prayer lot. And listen, this past Monday, let's I just get so inspired every Monday morning. Okay, um, and this was a holiday. Some of you slept in good. I mean, I understand, but we did, they don't miss it. Every Monday morning, every Monday morning, we have our prayer line at 6.30 a.m. Feel free to join us. Uh, we come and intercede. We encourage one another. Uh, we have, listen, it's not just prayer, but we have praise reports. I mean, it's just awesome. It's just, it inspires me every Monday morning. So we invite you to join us there. Tuesday nights, our young adults have Bible study. They just had it last night. I was here. Listen, they set standards. They have in person, they have Zoom and Facebook Live. I mean, they just doing it. Not Zoom, I'm sorry. Uh, Google Meet. So they have in-person, they have Google Meet, and they have um, also Facebook Live. And so kudos to the young adults, okay, because they're making, listen, you're a young adult. You got no reason why you can't attend Bible study, okay? All right, so uh, that's Tuesdays, every other Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesdays, we have Bible study, youth of all ages at 6 p.m. Youth of all ages at 6 p.m. Every Wednesday, all right? And then we have Bible study for adults 
at noon and at 7 p.m. So you're invited to join us at either time. Let somebody know it's Bible study on Wednesdays. All right, also on Sundays, we have church school. We have church school. Church school begins at 8.30. And listen, I'm telling you, that's an awesome setting. It's church school. If you're in the area, you can get here to church school. And notice, notice what you heard this. And I know we're, we're live and several hundred people are watching and, and will watch this. And listen, you're hearing this preacher say this. You're hearing this pastor say this. I just said that if you're in the area and you can get to church school, some of you may know it as Sunday school, get here. Because it's an awesome experience. I didn't say worship. I said church school. You didn't hear me say worship service. You, I said church school. Okay? Yes, because it's rewarding. This is where we learn. We learn together. At, it's <clears throat> A great atmosphere to learn. So if you can get here at 8.30 on Sundays and then at 9.45, we have the worship experience. All right. You know, a lot of times you hear worship come up before, but not here. Bible study in Sunday school, priorities. Bible study in Sunday schools at Olive Branch, priorities. Worship is a priority. Okay. Worship is important. Okay. But we want to emphasize the learning environment. That's just who we are. That's what we aspire to do. All right. So, um... Also, we want to uh, let you all know um, that, you know, in this frigid air, you know, stay warm, be safe. And, and when we get these slick roads, be careful um, because we care about you, okay? Um, and uh, wherever you are in this country, and we're international, so wherever you're on work, you know, uh, you're experiencing inclement weather, uh, just be careful, all right? Also, we want you to exercise our COVID-19 Beatitudes. We keep those, and that is to be careful, be cautious, and most importantly, be in constant communication with God. All right, that's all we have. Thank you all so much. Next week, next week, topical discussion. I know some people have logged off already. I should have said this earlier. Next week, topical discussion. What is that topical discussion next week? Anointing oil. Anointing oil. And we have a great lesson. Y'all have some questions. And so we're going to do our best to share um, our topical discussion next week on anointing oil. If we get through with that, we'll pick back up at chapter 12 of the Gospel According to St. Luke. But the priority next week is our topical discussion. All right, until next week. Yes, Trustee Sheila Bonner, Audrey Love. Yes, God bless you. Uh, church school is all. Yes, Sister Carol, I tried to share that. Um, meant me. Yes, Lucy Baker. All right, so listen, until next week, we want you to know we love you, we thank God for you, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.